Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Now today we're taking a look at how to create this really cool fire sparks effect within our side After Effects and this uses no plugins whatsoever. Um, it's purely done doing the built-in stuff that comes with every copy of After Effects. So let's just dive right in then. Um, the first thing we're going to have to do is create a new composition. So new composition. Uh, mine's going to be 1920 by 1080 and at 60 frames per second. Um, I'm just going to call this one Fire Sparks and hit OK. Now, we want to create a new solid to put our particle effects on. So go ahead and do that. It doesn't matter what color it is, um, and you'll see why later. Just going to call that Sparks and make it white. That's totally fine. OK, so the effect that this uses is known as CC Particle World. So if you just type in CC Part, There'll be two. Don't use particle systems two, use particle world. Um, just want to drag that down and you'll see that you get this mesh um, which acts as the floor for your particles, but no particles at the moment. And that's because you just have to scrub forward a little bit um, for the generator to start. So if you want your video to start with no particles, which then come into effect according to the physics you apply, you just leave the layer at the start. If you want them to be on the screen when your composition starts, just shift that along a little bit and extend it and you can see that it's already there on your first frame. The emitter has already begun emitting. Um, now, I usually just scrub forward a little bit anyway because I like having nothing at the start in this one. I think it looks good. So scrub forward to about a second so that you know that your particles are on screen and you know what roughly they're going to look like, okay? Um, now, the first thing you wanna do is pop up to your um, effects control window. Um, mine is docked with my project, but um, if you don't have that, you can just go to window and then effects control. Um, which is sorry, which is down the bottom there. Um, there, effects control, sorry. <laughs> uh, and the first thing you want to do is go to particles and change the particle type to shaded sphere. Okay, then you want to choose your birth and death colors to look a little bit more like fire. I find the birth works well as a sort of dark orange, um, usually around sort of there. And the death color, if you sample the, the birth color and then just crank it down and make it a bit more red. That usually looks a bit nice as well. Okay, so those colors are correct now, um, but they don't look anything like fire. And that's because the birth and death size is far too high. So we want to make the birth size something very small. Let's try maybe 0 0.05. That's nice and tiny. And the death size, you want to be zero because we want them to disappear um, when the particle ends. Okay, so that gives us a nice um, collection of particles there, but as you can see, it's still got this weird sort of fountain effect on it. Um, now that is not what we like. So what we want to do is just pop up to, uh, if you twirl down particle and just pop up to physics, you want to change the animation type to direction axis. And what this does is it allows you to pick a direction and all the particles will, as you see, will fly in that one direction. Okay. Now at the moment it still looks like a sort of water stream or something like that. And that's because it's due to the velocity and gravity, um, which we're going to affect now. So velocity is sort of the speed at which it is emitted from the emitter. Um, let's crank that down to 0 0.1. OK, and as you can see, they just start dropping. Now, fire particles don't drop. They rise in the air from the heat. And uh, now that is due to gravity that we need to change. At the moment, it is on 0 0.5. And now that obviously means a positive number. So a positive um, amount of gravity dragging it down to the floor. If we would change that to negative 0 0.5, you can see that the sparks fly up, but it's way too fast and strong. We want them to kind of drift. Um, now, I found that negative 0.01 um, is a bit too little. So negative 0 0.05 is about right. And what that does, it just means they drift up ever so slowly. Okay. Um, so we've got our gravity and our velocity sorted. Um, now we will come back to this tab, but close it down for now. And we just want to go to the producer tab. Now at the moment, they're all producing from this uh, one tiny area here. We want them to come in a bit wider than that. Um, so we want them to crank up the radius X until the red circle just goes slightly off the screen and that increases the area in which these particles are created on the x-axis. We want it to be maybe half the height um, of the composition on the y-axis. And if you want to, if you want some variation in the size of your particles, you can crank up the z-axis as well. And that's um, the z-axis is away from you, away from the viewer. So um, a high z-axis is more depth from your eye line to the far distance. Um, so we'll crank those up a little bit as well. Now, as you can see, we're already starting to get there, um, but it's still looking a bit odd. And that's because the emitter is in the center. 
I'm just going to crank that down and maybe the Y down just a touch, just to get a bit more control over it. There we go. Um, and we're going to want to um, affect the birth rate and longevity. Now, at the moment, these things are fading away pretty quickly, the particles, which look more like fireflies, you know, rather than natural sparks, because they tend to be um, more visual for longer. OK, so the birth rate will half it, and that basically reduces the amount of particles on screen um, because they are born at half the rate. But the longevity is how long they stay on the screen for. About seven seconds tends to work. As you can see, they do fade away and fade in still, um, but they are on screen for a bit longer, which is what we want. Now, if you just twirl down producer again um, and stop the playback, you'll notice that you have this um, in the middle where you can drag around the position of your uh, producer. I tend to find it works best just off to the bottom left. And then when the particles are produced, they'll start to come in as if drifting in from a source. But because we increase the Y axis of the radius, you see that they drift all the way to the top of the screen. Now, in my mind, they're moving a bit fast. Now, you'd think you'd adjust the velocity to do that, but that's not the case. Um, you can actually adjust the resistance, which gives you a bit more um, movement as well, variation in the movement. Uh, and that is under physics. So if you go down to physics and you crank the resistance all the way up, you'll notice, say if we put them up to maybe seven, that the particles start resisting that velocity and they hover in the air. Now, this is far, far too slow, but it does illustrate the point. Somewhere around one or two works well, I feel. OK, so then when you start that along, these particles start to drift in. It's going a bit slower than it would because it's just rendering quickly. But those particles start to drift in and you'll notice they look a bit more as if they're being influenced by some kind of flame or um, effect from below. Now, you can, uh, you notice that there's not a lot going on on the right hand side of the screen uh, and you can fix that with extra. If you crank extra up, you'll notice that it's um, pushing all the particles to towards the emitter. And if you crank extra down, you'll notice that it pushes those particles away from the emitter. So we can crank that all the way down, maybe to about negative four. Let's try. Uh, and you'll notice now that the particles do move across the screen a bit more. Maybe let's try negative five. Yeah, that looks about good. Um, and then there is, uh, we've done resistance already, um, maybe a touch less on that resistance, maybe 0.8. There, yeah, that makes it a bit better. And you can see with the extra as well, that gives it that, uh, funnily enough, that extra movement that creates a bit of variation in the particles as if it's being buffeted by the wind, if that makes sense, um, which is correct. Now, if you wanted to, you can adjust the um, direction axis as well. Um, now, what this does, is you'll notice it does rotate and twist the original direction in which the particles are going. I'm happy with where it is. It's just in case you want to do that. Um, OK, that's pretty much it. And uh, there's just the last couple of things which is nice to add on. Um, now, what you can do is um, add motion blur to these to make it look a bit better. So just go back down to your um, source. Uh, if you toggle your switches between um, modes and uh, effects, you'll have this motion blur effect. You have to toggle that there, but it won't do anything unless you apply motion blur here. And let's find one where some are moving quite quickly and apply that motion blur. So you can see the difference in that the what particles that are moving faster um, actually blur as if from a camera here. Look, you can see this is stretching out, things like that, um, which is nice. Now, if I were to just temporarily crank up the um, velocity, to say one, you'll notice here that where it's moving faster, the, the motion blur is much more extreme. OK, you can see the difference a lot easier. There's without and there's with. Without and with. All the small particles and stuff get this extra length on them. So maybe we'll just try 0.2. Is that a bit too strong still? Yeah, not 0.15. That gives us a bit of variation. Lovely jubbly. OK, so at the moment they look great, but they don't look particularly hot. Um, and that's because we haven't applied a glow to them, and that's what we're going to do next. So if you go back to your effects and presets, type in glow, and you just click and drag that down onto your sparks layer, and you'll notice immediately they begin to pop a bit more. Um, let's duplicate it, maybe. There you go. Perfect. So now you notice these look a lot more like embers. Um, they automatically t inherit the colors from the uh, layer underneath, so there's no need to worry. Just close that. And if you want them to look a bit hotter, you can. Um, decrease the glow threshold, which will increase the heat. Um, or if you increase it, it will sort of decrease the heat. If that makes sense. I find maybe somewhere around 70 works quite well. Um, perhaps 60. 
Mm, perhaps 40. <laughs> no, I think I think about 70 is fine. Okay, great. Now that looks good. Um, we've got two glows on there. So I'll just make this glow threshold maybe 50 and see what the difference there. So we've got two sets of variating um, intensity in glows, which looks nice. But the screen doesn't look particularly hot. Um, and the way you can do that is just by adding in a new solid, like so. Now you'll notice that that does give you a black halo around your images on a light background, um, but it's not going to stay light, so don't worry about that. Um, what we're actually going to do is pop over to the effects and presets channel, and we're going to find a gradient ramp. Uh, and that just basically gives us a nice gradient that we can apply. Um, take our first color, and we want a nice dark orange, maybe something like that. And then we'll sample that color for the end of the ramp, and then just make it a bit darker. Maybe something like this, there we go. Um, so you'll notice that you can still see a little bit of those black halos, so you can just play around with the blending modes. Um, something like screen usually gets rid of them on a dark background, like so. If I change that back to normal, you can see that that black sort of comes back in a little bit. So we'll change that to screen to get rid of it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, now I did, in the um, example, have some text on the screen as well. Um, here, which sort of flickered a little bit, um, but that's very easy to do. Uh, all you need is your standard text in a color. Oops, excuse me. Uh, in a color, I've chosen here a nice dark one. Um, if I just pull up character window. Um, and then on top of that, you just duplicate another layer in a brighter color and apply a mask to it. And then you just wiggle the opacity. So we're going to do that now. Okay. Let's pop back over to our current tutorial and bring some sparks in so we know what we're working with. And let's just type something. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Let's do that. Um, now, you just need to realign that to the middle um, and pump it in the middle of the stage. And we'll crank up the size a bit. Okay. So this first layer we want to be nice and dark. Um, I might just sample that bottom color there. And then we duplicate it with command, uh, con command or control D to put it above it. And then we want that color to be nice and bright. Maybe you'll sample this. Oh, that's a bit too much actually. Crank that down a bit. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're trying to simulate as if there was a glow beneath it. So we'll just mask out half of this layer, maybe a bit more than half, and change that mask to uh, subtract. Okay. Then you go down to your mask settings and increase the feather. And that just blurs the edges out a bit to make it look a bit softer. Okay. Now that looks fine. All you want to do then is press T to bring up your opacity. Hold Alt on your keyboard and click the keyframe. And that brings up your scripting window. Um, and the only thing you want to type in is opacity dot wiggle. Open parentheses. Let's try 10 comma 50. And that wiggles a value of 10, um, a value of 50 every 10 seconds. Okay. And let's see what that looks like when we pre-render. Okay. So you can see it's already flickering. Um, we have to wait a few seconds until we can see it in real time. Um, so maybe I'll wait until it gets to four and we can see from there. I have a feeling it might be a slight fa uh, slightly fast, so I might reduce it down quite a bit. Let's have a look. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. It's flickering quite quickly, but that could possibly be um, like a fire is. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, if you wanted to, you could just add a, another glow to the top thank you layer, which just adds a bit of extra um, heat to it, essentially. Um, but that really is all there is to it. It's a really simple technique. So I hope you found this tutorial useful, you guys. If you did, let me know, and I'll do more of this sort of thing. If you didn't, also let me know, and I'll see what I can do to improve. Um, so thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.